Dinosaur. That very word sparks the imagination of many. That's what it did for me. Growing up, all I ever wanted to be was a paleontologist. <coughs> I was deeply fascinated by dinosaurs, paleontology, and the natural world. But being from a working class background and from a family that had never been to university, there were many barriers blocking me from achieving my dream. This <laughs> is me at five years old. I was one of those children who absolutely loved dinosaurs. You know the one, that annoying kid telling everybody dinosaur facts. I still do this. In school, I was really rubbish academically. And I struggled for most of my school years. In fact, due to my poor GCSE grades, I wasn't allowed to do A-level science, which I needed for university, and I ultimately failed the two A-levels that I did. Throughout my school life, on multiple occasions, I was told that I simply wasn't good enough or clever enough to become a paleontologist, that I'd never make it. There are a few comments that stuck in memory. One being, ha, you want to be a paleontologist? There's no chance, you're from Doncaster. <laughs> However, my personal favorite is, stop playing with dinosaurs and go and get a real job. <laughs> I recall one paleontologist told me, I'll never be taken seriously in paleontology unless I get a degree or two and that I had to go to university. Deflated by such comments, obviously feeling low, I simply didn't have the grades, the qualifications, or the finances to go to university. Yet, none of this defined me. Instead, I was more determined than ever to prove them wrong. Outside of school, I educated myself by visiting museums, collecting fossils, and generally learning more about paleontology. But I needed more experience. I needed an idea. What I decided to do was something out of the extraordinary. I needed to do something to propel me in the right direction. Something to really help elevate me above other people, to propel me in that right direction. And in 2008, everything changed. Approaching the end of my final school year, I found myself running out of ideas. After weighing up my options, I decided to hold off pursuing further education and came up with this really crazy idea to go and hunt for dinosaurs in the USA. Sounds far-fetched, right? But after making contact with several museums, it became a real possibility. I decided upon a museum called the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. Nothing says dinosaurs like that, I told myself. <laughs> to me, this was it. This was going to be my one big shot in paleontology. But I needed to fund this trip, and to do that, I had to make sacrifices. I was already working a job that I didn't like. Also, I didn't pay very well. So I began working a second job, and that meant sacrificing time with family and friends. And I sold my childhood Star Wars collection. <laughs> yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> I was thinking about what this trip might mean for a, for a career in paleontology. In summer 2008, at the age of 18, I jetted off to Wyoming to begin an almost four month long trip volunteering at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. That trip changed my life. It formed the backbone of my career. My very first day in the field was like something out of an epic movie or documentary. I traveled by jeep across rugged terrain, up vast hills, and to the resting site of a 150 million year old long neck dinosaur. It was mind blowing. This is me digging up dinosaur bones on my very first day. Not only did this trip provide me plenty of life experience, as well as professional experience and field work, but also a museum work as well. Like this. Helping to make a copy of a full triceratops skeleton. Because this stuff dreams were made of. It was also my first introduction to research and academia. I had literally no idea how fossils are studied, written up, and formally described in scientific journals. It was an entirely new process to me. Eager to continue learning more, on my return from Wyoming, still aged 18, 
I began volunteering my local museum right here in Doncaster, Doncaster Museum and Art Gallery. Now, I've visited Doncaster Museum since I was a little boy, but they never had any fossils on display and they didn't have a paleontologist. So imagine my surprise when I discovered that they had more than 10,000 different fossils in their collection. Going through the fossils, a member of the education team informing a fantastic replica ichthyosaur skeleton that they had. Ichthyosaurs are a group of truly fascinating extinct marine reptiles that superficially resemble dolphins and sharks. They look like this. Excited, I went to look for the specimen. Coming face to face with this ichthyosaur, something puzzled me. I had that nervous excitement for this. This was no replica. It had been mistakenly identified as a plastic copy, but I identified it as the real deal. You could say that nobody saw us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Although I had no experience doing scientific research, after some encouragement from two ichthyosaur experts I happened to meet in Wyoming, I decided to study the specimen. As it turned out, this ichthyosaur is around about 187 million years old from the Jurassic period and was collected from Dorset, England. I took a closer look at that dark mass you can see there between the ribs. In there, I identified a tiny fish scale and hundreds of microscopic hook-shaped objects from the arms of the squid. What you're looking at is this animal's last meal before it died. That formed the basis of my first ever scientific publication and kickstarted my career in academia, and thus the transition from amateur to professional began. Even more extraordinary, working with Professor Judy Massere, who I happened to meet in Wyoming, we determined that this ichthyosaur was an entirely new species, and that meant we got to name it. I decided to name the new species Ichthyosaurus aringae in honor of one of my childhood heroes, pioneering paleontologist Mary Arring from Lyme Regis Dorset, who made remarkable contributions to science, yet was often not given the due credit for her discoveries. By heading to Wyoming, only to come back to my hometown and discover something new to science, it sent me down a remarkable career path in paleontology. I've now been working as a paleontologist for over a decade, and I'm recognised as one of the world's leading experts on ichthyosaurs. I've written multiple scientific studies, named several new species, including one of the oldest velociraptor-like dinosaurs ever found. I've identified an ichthyosaur pregnant with octuplets and described ichthyosaurs as big as blue whales. Outside of academia, my work has taken me across the world hunting for dinosaurs and studying thousands of fossils. And I've even written several books, one of which, would you believe, even formed the basis of a primetime TV show that I was the expert co-presenter and series advisor. For my work in paleontology, I've been given several awards. I won a gold medal for excellence in science at the House of Parliament in 2015. My journey into <laughs> paleontology and academia certainly hasn't been traditional. I never did an undergraduate degree. But based on years of teaching myself how to do research, which I began when I was 18, I was able to go straight into studying for a master's and recently completed my PhD. Having the idea to think outside the box, to go against the norm and dare to be different has allowed me to make my dreams a reality. And the point is, that's what you can do as well. Go out into the world. Don't wait for it to come to you. In the long run, I'd always known what I wanted to do, but figuring out how to get there is the hardest of all. We each have it within ourselves to go beyond what is expected and achieve our dreams. It's over to you to follow yours. Thank you very much.